Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to another video. What you see on the screen right now in front of you is a physics engine that I've been working on for the past few weeks, and it was originally meant to be a uh, small part of a bigger project, but I realized that it was actually kind of useful by itself. So I took all the physics code and I made it into its own code base, and now anytime that I need similar physics in the future, I can just reuse this whole thing. All right, so most games need a way of simulating physics because I mean, most games tend to approximate some sort of physical reality, and here in the real world, we are obviously bound by certain physical principles. So here's my own game, which approximates the very real situation of a sentient cereal box, and as you can see, he is affected by forces like gravity and the reaction forces from the furniture that he's standing on. The physics I implemented for this game is uh, not particularly sophisticated, though. It works, but it isn't suitable for simulating precise machines, which is actually what I needed for this project. So I set out building a real physics engine. The first and most basic element that I needed is a system state object. This is a simple structure which tracks various object properties like position, velocity, and orientation. Next, we need a way to apply forces to the objects in the scene. This is handled by something called a force generator, and force generators can be things uh, like gravity or springs, and the math behind them is fairly straightforward. Next, we need a way to discretize time, and by discretization, I mean that in the real world, we usually regard time as being a continuous value. So in other words, you can subdivide it infinitely. Computers can't really do continuous values very well, so we need to break our simulation down into time steps. Every time we run the simulation, we advance time by the time step. For games, the time step is often just the length of each video frame, but you can actually run the simulation multiple times per frame, which further subdivides your time step. And the usual rule is that the smaller the time step is, the more accurate your simulation results will be. The final component of a basic physics engine is called the differential equation solver. Now this sounds like a complex term, but it actually isn't really that complicated. If you've written a basic game before or some sort of simulation, you've actually probably already written a differential equation solver. You might be familiar with this sequence of events uh, for an object that is accelerating. So first you add velocity multiplied by the time step to the object's position and then you add acceleration multiplied by the time step to the object's velocity. And in some sense, this has the effect of basically updating the position every frame by moving it by the object's current velocity, and you obviously have to update the velocity depending on how fast that object is accelerating. This simple process is actually a numerical approach for solving a differential equation, and this particular approach is called Euler's method. Euler's method isn't really that great, though. For sensitive systems, like what you see on the screen, the error can actually be fairly significant, and the simulation just explodes immediately. You can improve the accuracy by reducing the time step, since Euler's method becomes more accurate as the time step becomes smaller. But as you can see, to get good results, we need to run the simulation 600,000 times per second. It's a fairly simple simulation, so we can get away with it without taking a hit to our frame rate but for most scenes, this isn't really going to work. Instead, we can use a more clever technique called RK4, or the classic Runge Kuda method. I have left a link in the description of this video if you want to learn more about it, or you can check out my own implementation, uh, which is on the screen here. Essentially, we take a weighted average of four points instead of just a single point like with Euler's method. This results in a much more stable simulation and ultimately better performance. As you can see, I can run the same simulation with only 300 iterations per second as opposed to 600,000. This is actually all you need to simulate some basic systems. And to show this, I created this basic interface with my game engine and a few demos which only use springs and masses. A side note, and this is totally unrelated, but OBS, which is the screen capture program that I usually use, drove me absolutely insane while I was trying to make this video. It kept lagging and missing frames, even though my simulation was running smoothly. So I just wrote my own version, which is built directly into this demo. Every frame, it takes what's on the screen and sends it to a video encoder that is running in a separate thread. 
And I also made this into its own project as well. And it's a simple interface with just a few functions and allows you to write high quality MP4 files from a C++ application. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, one benefit of this is that regardless of the real time frame rate, the video is always smooth with a stable frame rate of your choosing. Anyway, this is a basic mass spring system suspended from a fixed point. And one interesting thing to note is how the total energy of the system doesn't change, which means that the simulation is at least somewhat stable. If energy grows without putting any energy in, then we know that something has to be broken. We can use a mass spring system to simulate cloth as well, and while it's not perfect, it performs fairly well, all things considered. We can also use force generators to implement simple game physics. So in this case, I made a repulsion force that acts on these blobs and keeps them from moving too close together. And I also added a simple AI that enables them to move around and explore. It looks a bit bouncy, but for some games, that might actually be a good thing. We can't actually use springs to simulate everything though. Even a simple double pendulum using stiff springs is pretty jittery, and the more complex the system becomes, the more unworkable this approach is. Instead, we can use something called constraints. A constraint, in the mathematical sense, is just a function that evaluates to zero only when a physical constraint is satisfied. So for example, let's say that we want to constrain this circle so that its x position is 3. And the constraint function is simply c equals x minus 3. And notice how when the circle is actually in the right place, c is equal to 0, and everywhere else, c is non-zero. The goal of the physics engine is to try to position and apply forces to objects such that every single constraint function is 0. Now most scenes are going to have a lot of constraints in them, and we need to find reaction forces that will satisfy all of these constraints at the same time. We can actually restate this problem as a matrix equation, and the math is a little involved, so I won't go into it too much uh, in detail here, but check the description for links to the full derivation. Essentially, it all comes down to this sort of scary looking equation. The right side is a vector with known values. J times W times the transpose of J is a matrix with known values, and lambda is a vector with unknown values. A more standard way of writing this would be a times lambda equals b, and by solving for lambda, we can find all the forces required to satisfy all constraints at the same time. There are a lot of different algorithms uh, to solve this equation, and some are more complex than others. I just implemented Gaussian elimination, which works well enough for my purposes, but I might have to switch to using something a bit more advanced later on. The actual constraints are implemented as classes, and they each have their own calculate method which calculates j and the time derivative of j based on their own constraint functions. And for those that are mathematically inclined, j is the Jacobian of the constraint function, and it's basically a matrix of derivatives with respect to all of our system state parameters. We then take all of these values and combine them all into a single master Jacobian matrix. Then we pass the left and right side of this equation to the linear equation solver to find lambda. Then it's just a matter of applying these constraint forces to each rigid body, and then our differential equation solver will take care of the rest. By the way, I know that this code is not particularly optimized. It's mainly just written for clarity, and there's a lot of room for optimization. And unfortunately, if I did optimize it, it'd be a lot less readable and more difficult to debug, and I'm not an expert so I just wanted to keep things easy for me. If I put anyone to sleep with that mathematical explanation, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find a compromise here. Uh, but anyway, here are some demos using this constraint solver system. First, we have the obligatory double pendulum system, and just having this is gonna get me millions of views on this video, I'm sure. We can also simulate a triple pendulum, which is uh, quite a bit more chaotic than a simple double pendulum, you can see how the numerical error accumulates and starts to mysteriously increase the total energy of the system. If we left this running for a very long time, and I mean like a very long time, like many hours, maybe even days, uh, the simulation would eventually break down. 
but that can be pretty easily prevented by just dampening the motion of everything slightly or just decreasing the time step to get a more accurate simulation. Now this demo is by far my favorite, but also caused me the most headaches. The mathematics behind things like this rolling constraint can be very tedious, um, as you can see, and I spent many hours chasing down arithmetic errors in the code. It's not difficult math per se, it's just basic differentiation, but small mistakes can be really hard to track down, so that just added to the fun, I guess. Here's another demo where we can see a vivid demonstration of why it's important to match spring stiffness to a particular application. The spring is the same in both systems, but its reaction to the system frequency is noticeably different. We can also simulate more complex systems like this with a lot of moving parts in them. And notice how uh, you can make rigid structural members using triangles, similar to how you would design a real machine. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show today. I hope you guys got some value out of this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see what I end up using this physics engine for. I'm pretty excited about that project and I think it'll be very interesting. By the way, I am still working on my serial adventure game, so expect a devlog for that in the near future. And alright, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.